All right, says Rowan. That was funny. That was really funny. All right. So you know, you know, y'all know what we're talking about, right? Today is August 14th, 2022. Um, our August focus is if faith and work co-create life, then what does knowing and work make? I'm going to say this again. If faith and work co-create life, then what does knowing and work make? Today's show intentions or lecture intentions is to show compatible viewers and listeners. Everybody, to show compatible viewers and listeners how knowing things create a better outcome than merely believing things. All right, so we're just going to go straight into it. Raise your hand if you took a nap. I just need to have this on wax. Y'all are going to love this. I can feel the energy. I can feel the energy. That's why I'm going straight into it. Um, As requested, we starting off straight from the Bible. Here we go. In the Bible, in James 2.26, if you want to write that down. In James 2.26, it reads... For as the body without the spirit, hold on, a body without a spirit is dead, and then there's a comma, so faith without works is dead also, as James 2.26. So, I thought to myself, so if faith without works is dead, then faith and works gives or makes life. But did that scripture tell us what type of life that that faith and work co-creates? Faith without works creates death, according to that. So if it's connected right, it has to create life. But what type of life did the, does that faith and work co-create? The definition of faith, complete trust or confidence in someone or something, strong belief in God, or in the doctrines of religion, based on spiritual apprehension, watch this, rather than proof. That's the definition of faith. <laughs> Work definition, activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result, a task or task to be undertaken, something a person or a thing has to do. That sounds like work. Last definition, knowing. Showing or suggesting that one has knowledge or awareness that a secret are known to only a few people, done in full awareness or consciousness. Now, I'm going to open it up with this question. So how does knowing affect your work versus how does faith affect your work? Faith and belief are cool. Okay, so clap it up for faith and belief. Faith and belief, yay. But the power of knowing instantly changes the way you faith and have faith for things and in things. I'll say that again. The power of knowing instantly changes the way you faith. Well, my faith is like this, and my faith is... The power of knowing will instantly change your faith and have faith in the, in, in the way you have faith for things or faith in things instantly changes. Carl Jung said, when you know something, you don't have to believe in it anymore. Carl Jung said, when you know something, you don't have to believe in it anymore. This is what I say. We can, um, I say, okay, so can we believe in the things we know? Or once we know, who cares what we believe anymore? Does belief need to stay with the Piscean Age? So y'all remember the Piscean Age? That was the age of belief. 
should belief stay there? And is this a prediction that belief is going to start dying? Um, and does knowing fit perfectly with this Aquarian age? Because we are the first humans in this age shift. You do know this, right? We're the first humans in that that are shifting into the age of Aquarius. Carl Jung also said, who looks outside. So here's myself, according to Carl Jung, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. I said that was pretty cool. So the definition of belief is an acceptance that a statement is true. Like, oh, okay, I accept that this statement is true. Or something exists, you have trust in it, you have faith, or you have confidence in someone or something. That's belief. Now, the definition of no is to be aware of through observation, inquiry, or observation. Have a developed relationship with someone through meeting and spending time with them, be familiar or friendly with. Now, let me tell you something funny. What if someone said, I can't wait to get to believe you better? Instead of, I can't wait to get to know you better. <laughs> ah, yeah, we're going to break belief down. We're going to break belief down. Um, what's that old saying? Remember this old saying? If I would have believed what I have believed today, then where would I be? Now, that sounds silly because this one sounds better. If I would have known back then what I know today, then where would I be? That sounds so much better. Okay. So, does knowing come from book knowledge or does knowledge truly come from your own or other people's experiences? I say basically, all we know is knowing. Now this is deep. All we know is knowing. We are always knowing. We are here to increase our knowing levels. And if you take one day off, then your knowing, my knowing, whoever takes a day off, your knowing will decrease thanks to the laws of vibration, correspondence, and rhythm. And we can go into that later. But um, a Danish philosopher, Saint Q, it's, it's a weird uh, saying, but it's like San QT Cup. Don't ask me to say it again. Um, he said, you live your life forwards. And think about it. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, move forward. Yeah, move forward. Okay. But you understand it backwards. Ain't that something? We don't go through a lot of understanding moving forward, before forward all the time. He said you understand it moving backwards. So, did you know that love is knowing? Love is even knowing. How about this? The people you love, do you want them to believe they love you back? Or to know they love you back? Man, y'all really taking it that belief. Well, let's put some life into belief. Come on. Let's breathe some life back into in the belief. This is how you do it. In the Bible, it reads, all things are possible to those that believe. All right. Believe got something. Uh-oh. Jason's making a face. Is he really setting belief up to get? Yeah. Stop clapping. Let me do one more. You know the defiant person going to be like, get that one last clap. This is what I say. So are all things done for those that know how to? So I'm going to piece them together. All things are possible. All things are done. Watch this. All things are possible. All things are done. For, for those that believe. For those that know how to. And just compare those sentences. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. That Bible scripture is super dope. And it's really good for believers. So again, all things are possible. And then right under it say, so all things are done. Possibilities is cool. I love possibilities. What if you um, really needed an answer and they was like, possibly? You're going to be like, yes. Or you're going to be like, oh, that's limbo. So all things are possible. 
to those that believe. All I'm saying is just put this sentence under it. So are all things done for those that know how to? Just put them up to each other and then, you know, hopefully it does something for you like it did for me. Um, did you know that even the land will return what is planted in it? So when you, whatever you plant in land, it returns. The mind works the same way. You can believe with it. Ooh, let me put that seed. You can believe with it or you can know with it. So here's a question. Knowing your worth versus believing your worth. Did you know that knowing is so powerful that the power of knowing that you don't know can save your life and the lives of others around you? The power of knowing that you don't know. <laughs> Adam Grant said the curse of knowledge is that it closes our minds to what we don't know. Because I got so much knowledge. What do I need to what do I need to know about what I don't know? <laughs> we are born not knowing what things are. Once we are taught what things are, watch how silly this is. I want to say that again a little bit slower. We are not born knowing what things are. I hope everybody understands that. We don't ah, erosion. You don't, you're not born and be like, oh, erosion, right? So we're not born, we, we are born not knowing what things are. Once we are taught what things are, we seal ourselves within a linguistic shell of other people's perspective of things, other people's realities, other people's scenarios, curses and spells. He said curses and spells. What are you talking about? Well, shout out to your children's spelling bees. No spirit or energy exchanges there, right? Um, shout out to curse words and music. So back to what I'm saying. We are born not knowing what things are. And again, once we are taught what things are, we seal ourselves within a linguistic shell of other people's perspectives of things. Other people's realities other people's scenarios and curses and spells. Now, my haters want to talk. There you go being confusing again, Jason. And I say, one good thing about confusion is you're about to learn something. And this so-called confusion comes from being interwoven into different forms of knowing and unknowing. I'm sorry. Into different forms of knowing and unknown knowing how did i even know that unknown knowing man i didn't even know i knew that unknown knowing so when people ask you questions and you actually have the power to say i don't know i think that hurts some people like it's just like stings in your dna or something i don't know but I'm not going to lie, I hate that word. Because I feel like there's a better word, like, you know, let's figure, I'll figure it out or I'll look into it. I don't know, it just cuts, just, it just, I don't know. You don't even leave room to, to, to know, but let's go, let's go into this. It's so powerful that you help yourself. Now, again, sometimes saying I don't know, it's so powerful that you can help yourself from draining energies and from other drainers. Um, I used to believe that knowing and showing people that you know a lot was like a credible asset that anyone can possess. You can know a lot and you can know a lot until I found out how people view you as a people pleaser, a giver or an easy win. Now, remember, this is when they're going through their good times because a people pleaser and a giver and an easy win is. It's called a hospital for a lot of people. And when people are really jacked up, they don't look down on people like that. It's only when they're, you know, feeling good or higher. That's usually when they're um, behaving like that. So while other people tell you 
not to care and to be like a child, to be clear, to be loving, to be spontaneous, to be infinitely uh, flexible, be flexible and ready for each moment. Oh, I'm thinking about the bills and I'm thinking about this and ready for each moment to wonder and to accept miracles. Yeah, I said accept miracles. You have to actually be looking at a miracle to accept it. I wasn't even looking at it. <laughs> Let's move forward. But once a person starts knowing that they know, watch this. Yeah, I know I know. <laughs> once a person starts knowing that they know, their rate for knowing more dramatically slows down or just stops which is bad because thanks to the wonderful world, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful world of duality, if we ever have a unknown, we also have a known attached to every part of its reality. Oh no, you have a known attached to its reality. I don't know, that's, now that's a hard, I don't know. A hard unknown is connected to a hard known, whatever you say. So, one of my goals is to know source or the seed of things. And once you know source, your knowing transitions to a, a, another word. And that word is called trust. And once you trust the thing, person, or scenario, you can get to comprehend it better or best. I don't know what you're talking about. And you can comprehend it better or best. We always arguing over miscommunication and you can comprehend it better or best. We just can't get along. Once you trust a thing, person, or scenario. I don't know about that place. Oh, it's scary. And then when you go in and you found out it's really awesome and then you're like, oh, I trust the thing to a certain extent. You can comprehend it better or best because you have viewed it you have viewed it with your or our inner sight and vision and outer sight and vision. So reality creates itself, watch this, by knowing itself. <laughs> it's a process with no end in mind. Get it? Infinity, no end in mind where... We're inside of the creator's mind of all of this right now. Get it? No end in mind. Like our dreams are inside of our heads at night and and in our minds during the day. Shout out to our daydreams that are in our heads. Okay. So when a person so-called sees or witnesses an incident. Now watch this. And they're giving a so-called report on it, right? And they say that something hasn't happened. Seems to always interest me because, as we know, there are known knowns, right? Known knowns. Like, we know we know something, right? Clap it up for yourself. For, seriously, feel, feel good about yourself. There's known knowns. You feel good, right? Now, there are things we know we know. We also know that there are known unknowns. Yeah, I don't know about rocket science. Yeah, I don't know about biochemical waste and stuff like that. So you know you don't know that, right? Now, but I can know that. Okay, smack yourself on the hand. We didn't ask you that. You're just being defiant. There are known unknowns, right? Even if you know that, it's going to still be something that you don't know. And you're going to know you don't know, okay? So that is to say we know that there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. That's the ones we don't know that we don't know. Don't forget that one, okay? Because if one looks throughout the history of Western culture and other so-called free countries, it's the latter category that tends to be difficult Shout out to all the racist people. How can you be racist when, watch this, 
There are also unknown unknowns, the ones we don't know that we don't know. And then mix that with racism. And then just say hypothetically, just say hypothetically, say hypothetically, say hypothetically God put humans on the planet, right? Just, let's just say hypothetically. And other humans are messing with other humans. <laughs> so let's just say hypothetically a God put humans on this planet. And other humans are messing with these humans. Hypothetically. Because I know you all are gods and stuff like that. And I know. But hypothetically, if a god, you know, just created humans. And y'all all are like messing with one particular human. There are unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know that we don't know. That's all I got to say about any of that. So one way to increase your knowing is to keep, watch this, because <clears throat> some people will be like, I only got two eyes, but I say one way to increase knowing is to keep one eye on survival, one eye on truth, and one eye on God. So you're saying one way to increase your knowing. Yeah, I didn't say the only way. I said one way to increase your knowing is to keep one eye on survival, one eye on truth, and one eye on God. Some people will get that. Some people won't. Another way I increase my knowing, watch this, is by interviewing and discussing. Interviewing and discussing, watch this, not knowing topics with my open-minded friends, people, circle, category, whatever you want to say, which increased my knowing of things I once didn't know. Carl Jung also said the transcendental function is not something one does oneself. It comes rather from experiencing the conflict of opposites. Or, or rags to riches. That's a conflict of opposites. Oh, why don't you just say it like that, <laughs> Carl Young? Okay, you all remember our talks on duality, right? All right. Jay-Z said, I came to a fork in the road and I went straight. Let's go to the mind. What if there was a fork path in your mind and I had a 16-week curriculum that shows you how to go straight in your mind? Make sure y'all inbox me on that um, if y'all want to go to my workshop. I got some workshops coming up. All right, now check this out. This is bars. I got, I got visuals. I got visuals with this one. Okay. My Rastafarian friend, he was talking about belief and knowing. And I said, man, let me hear, let me hear what my Rastafarian homeboy said. He said, belief is a doubt. I said, what are you talking about, Rastafarian OG? He said, belief is a doubt because you cannot believe something and know it. And you can only believe in what you don't know. I said, keep going. He was interviewing this, and I don't want to say too much, but I'm going to just say it like this. He was interviewing this man, and he said, do you believe in your mother and father? And the man was like, because most people would say, um, no. And the man said, no. He said, no, I know my father and mother. Then he goes like this, but you might believe in Jesus. And he was like, yeah. He said, because you don't know Jesus, which means you can only believe in what you don't know. So I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, shoot. So belief is a doubt, according to my Rastafarian OG. Now, he said, he asked this so-called white man. Uh-oh, Jason says, so-called white man. He's about to start saying something racist. My Rastafarian homie asked this so-called white man if he believed that he is a white man. And guess what the man said? He said, yes, I know that I'm a white man. And he started talking about where his family came from. And yes, he seemed very white. Not very white, but very white. Okay? Now, <laughs> the Rastafarian OG said, 
if you have five cans, right? So I'm gonna put five cans right here. Now again, these are all red. It wasn't that deep for me to get different colors. Hey, maybe, look, look, maybe y'all send me some Venmos. Uh, I'm just playing. I promise you I'm just playing. So the Rastafarian OG said, if you have five cans, right? One could be black, one could be white, one could be yellow, one could be um, orange, and one could be pink, okay? And let's just say, because I'm getting, I'm turning them upside down. We filled them all with water. Shh, the same water, same hose, same thing. Shh. So we fill all these different um, containers of water, right? He asked this so-called white man, he said, um, you wouldn't be able to see. He, he Okay, he said, well, you know what color the liquid was in the different color cans? Because... You all saw, saw me put in the water, but the white, the so-called white man that he was interviewing didn't. And guess what the uh, so-called white man said? He said, no. He said, you wouldn't be able to see the water because the cans are closed and sealed shut. So you would be able to only, you would be able to only see the different cans and the sounds of the liquid in the cans. So your eyes would tell you that all the cans may be different until you taste and see that all the cans had the same water inside of them. Watch this. Then you will know that all the different cans have the same water after you taste it. So. This is what everybody is saying. They were like, Jason, so are you trying to say that all the so-called different human bodies represent the different color cans and science can easily explain the similarities of anatomy, liquids, spirits, and mind poured into them versus uh, we're all different. Yeah, all y'all are different. Yeah, all uh, y'all. And fight each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fight each other. Okay. So, um, we'll touch on that in more lectures, but I ask different races of people. And again, I'm asking all them. I'm asking all y'all. Excuse me, different races of people. Excuse me, ma'am, in different races. And excuse me, sir, in different races. What color is your mind? Uh, most, if not all, uh, won't know the right answer. Because aren't we really just spirit, souls, and energies and minds poured into these so-called different bodies like the same water, the same water that was poured in the so-called different color cans? You were programmed at birth to believe that you are only the outer cutters or outer casings of the cans that your water is in and you all Do know that the human body is mostly made of water. Okay, so some people say belief and faith are based on knowledge, while I say unbelief and lesser faith are based on knowledge too. Now, which one would you buy if you had the money to buy? So you can only buy two things. You could buy 100% belief and faith, or you will buy 100% knowing. I know what you would spend your money on. Hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Because this is a science question. Some people say, Jason, is belief in faith a form of matter or antimatter? I literally was like, well, you trying to throw me off with that question. But I know the Bible and I said, well, in Hebrews 11, 1, this is the King James Version. It states, now faith is a substance. Jason, is belief in faith a form of antimatter or matter? Now, faith is, is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But, 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 I know some of my um, deeper Bible uh, scholars would say, well, in Hebrews 11, 1, in, in the NIV, it states, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and an assurance about what we do not see. 
So I say it depends on what your interpretation of what you're reading and if it actually works. Because I'm not, I'm not going to care. I don't care what you're reading. Does it work and how does it work for you? Well, you know, in my religion, you know, okay. How's it, does it work and how's it work for you? How's it working for you? We can talk about that. But the end of chapter 10, chapter 10 of Hebrews, it finishes describing the new covenant with Jesus was better than the old covenant of animal sacrifices. And look it up if you want, if you want to. That's in Hebrews 10, 1 through 18. And it ended with a reminder, watch this, to not go back to old ways. So as a child getting the Bible pushed to me in different directions, I always took the narrative that faith comes from the trust you have from the current knowledge of a thing, person, or scenario. I'll say that again. I have always took the narrative that faith comes from the trust you have in your current knowledge. Because your current knowledge, if it upgrades, it changes. If it downgrades, it changes things. So according to your current knowledge, uh, your faith comes from the trust you have in your current knowledge of a thing, person, or scenario. So another sign of this faith, trust, and knowledge connection is that all this co-creates and produces obedience to laws and principles that results in God's blessings and approval. According to um, the dictionary obedience definition, because that's how you get it. Um, obedience, uh, that's what I'm giving you a definition, so you can argue with the, the dictionary. And there's some people with confidence um, at this certain time that they will argue with forms of the dictionary. It's magical. So the definition of obedience, uh, compliance with an order, request, or law, <laughs> or submission to another's authority. Now, here's a question. Can belief, I remember I asked this question a long time ago. This is fun. Can belief be a superpower for humans? So again, I believe. So I've, I have a superpower that can also be greater than Jesus's power. What Jesus? I'm talking about Jesus in the Bible. Jesus' powers. Yeah, not Austin powers. Jesus' powers. Jason, you tripping now. You talking about doing greater works than Jesus. You tripping. Well, in John 14, 12, it clearly states, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Look it up in John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Hold on, hold on. Jason, you got to ask him this question first. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You promise? Yes, I promise. You promise you believe in Jesus? Yes. Okay. Now I can read this and make you feel like you can do greater works in Jesus. Verily, verily, I say, uh, John 14, 12, remember. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me. Oh, that's why Jason asked me that I believe in Jesus. He that believeth in me, the works that I do, Shall he do also? Okay, so I can do works like Jesus. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to be with the Father. And I used to throw a joke at that. I used to be like, because y'all was trying to crucify him and Jesus didn't want to be around y'all according to the story. But y'all can do greater works than I do. So go do that. Come on, y'all. According to the scripture. So guess what? I remember doing a radio interview and this hater pastor called in. And I was young too, doing a lot of my speaking. So I would get disrespected by older public speakers. They would call me, they would call me son. And it would be a lot of, like, uh, it would be a lot of older women around. And they would say son or something like that to uh, show distinction between them and superiority between them and all the older women that was around. And I used to be like, sometimes I would be like, man, I'm about to fight back. And then sometimes I'm like, nah, I'm gonna see them on too much this year. I'm gonna leave them alone. Cause I don't feel like, I don't feel, I don't want that to turn into something, right? But this particular pastor, I said, 
And again, I was on the radio. This is towards the beginning. And I was like, man, should I? I said, I'm about to get this dude on the radio. So he said, look, son, you're not explaining it right. Greater me meant longer. And I said, hold on, let me go back to John 14, 12 in a Bible that existed way before me. Let me read it according to what that pastor said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do in longer works than these shall he do because I go to be with the Father or I go into the Father. So I'm like, longer or greater? So then I was like, okay, he put me on the spot or did he? I said, hmm, sir. Jawan Howard had a longer NBA career than Michael Jordan, but was it greater? And if you needed numbers, I know Jawan Howard was 19 seasons and Michael Jordan was 15 seasons. So again, greater meant longer, but Jawan Howard had a longer NBA career than Michael Jordan, but was it greater, sir? He hung up the phone. And I said, ah, okay, I think I can stay on my square with that one. Now, through faith and trust comes the increasing knowledge of how to do greater works. So through faith and trust comes the increasing knowledge. So I don't mean you got there, but it, it comes the increasing knowledge of how to do greater works. So Proverbs 2, 6 states, for the Lord gives wisdom where from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So let's play around in the dualities of knowing and believing. Y'all ready? Let's play around with some bars. First bar, don't believe in the things you know. Know the things you believe. Does that make sense? Don't believe in the things you know. Know the things you believe. So knowing is still kicking believing his butt. Now, I respect the aspirations of understanding and knowing because, again, the depth of knowing is deeper than most even understand. Because information doesn't always blossom in the knowledge, just as knowledge doesn't always blossom in the wisdom. Knowing history matters unless all you care about is going with the flow of the sheeps. Knowing history gives perspective. That better perspective yields higher outcomes. Jordan Peterson said, now this was cool. I like this one. Jordan Peterson said, put your intellectual hats on on, on this one. Because you're going to dig deep on this one. Shout out to everybody with hats on. <laughs> if your articulated knowledge is out of sync with your dreams, now watch this. Yeah, I'm smart. Yeah, I'm smart. Here's your dreams. You are not at your dreams, but you are smart. You have articulated knowledge, but it's out of sync with your dreams. Then you can become disassociated internally. You can have an internal war inside. I'm trying to break this down because he be talking fast and people be like, I don't understand that. So I'm just understanding. I'm breaking down what he's saying. And again, Somebody can see this and be like, no, -uh, he don't mean. He said, we think things that we don't act out. So imagine having thoughts of things and not acting them out. Man, I always wanted to do that. <sighs> That's why I feel so good when you beat somebody up in a dream and you wake up and be like, oh my God, I'm going to jail. Oh, that was just a dream. I just punched my boss in the face and I'm not getting fired. That was just a dream. It felt real because it's in your head. And your last time I checked, everything is in your head. It's called your mind, right? So we think things, we don't act them out. And watch this. We act out things that we don't dream, which produces a kind of sickness of spirit. Jason, you better say a cure. I am. Its cure is something like an integrated system of belief and representation. 
Jason, what the heck are you talking about? That sounded too smart. I know. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm Buddhist. I'm atheist. I'm a devil worshiper. I'm a... Oh, I get it. It's cure is something like an integrated or you integrated a system of belief. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a and representation. That's the cure. Many people will be lost with this statement, but watch this. Insight comes from acting. Watch this. Acting out. No, acting within. Jason, what are you talking about? Well, role playing. You used to do it as a child. You think it's crazy now. But you do it if you're about to fight somebody. You see boxers. What are boxers doing? <laughs> what do boxers do when they're about to? Okay, whatever. So most people would be lost with this statement. But again, insight comes from acting within. And, and, and anything that is out of sight, inner and outer sight. So anything that is out of sight is not only possible to see. It's probably not currently in you. Think about it, it's out of sight. It's, it's probably not in you right now. So when you tell people stuff and they're like, whoa, that's out of, that's not in them to help you probably. The cure for so-called sickness of spirit, watch this, it's really easy, is every duality mindset. So if whatever mindset got you into it is every duality mindset and behavior that co-created the so-called current Sick spirit. And if you took my laws workshop, then you will know even better what I'm talking about. So that was a shameless, yeah, shameless plug that I'm going to start doing. So here we go with some equations, three equations. Knowing equals theoretical knowledge. So look up theoretical knowledge and equate that to knowing. Understanding equates to practical experience last but not least knowing the unknown spiritual revelations are the proverbial light bulb experience so those three things knowing understanding and knowing the unknown look those things up and i'm going to give you i'm going to give you an interpretation of what i'm saying with that do you remember the role runner was being chased by a coyote. Remember that? Meet me. Y'all remember that or y'all just gonna be? Okay. And the road runner runs off the cliff. And the coyote chases. And then all of a sudden the coyote knows he did something wrong. Watch this. But then he falls. And as he falls, the coyote understands his mistakes. Now, he wouldn't have known the fall, but he understands the fall. So I'll say that again. Do you remember the road runner was being chased by, a coyote, by, by the coyote? And the road runner runs off the cliff. And then the coyote chases off the cliff. And then all of a sudden, the coyote knows... He did something wrong. But as he falls, he understands his mistakes. So what if we treated people the same way we treated God? Watch this. Do you believe in that guy? Yes, I believe in that guy. <laughs> Have you ever talked to that guy? No, I don't know that guy. Sounds crazy, right? Okay. Okay. So, is belief just a state we take on before knowledge? I'm going to say this again. Is belief just a state we take on before knowledge? Have you ever watched that movie? No. Well, you should watch that movie. It has the greatest action scenes that I have ever seen in a movie theater. Now, watch this. They just said that this was the greatest action scene they ever seen in a movie theater. So they, I could choose to believe their statement. So belief is the state I'm going to take on before I watch the movie. I'm going to have to believe them to a certain extent 
to watch that movie. To gain a new knowledge. But watch this. But if I watch the movie and it's trash. Trash. Then not only is my belief shaken about the movie. But it's also shaken about the person that gave me their opinion about the movie. And now I might not believe in them with other things. Which makes me unmotivated to know about it. So belief is a path that leads to wrong or right things, while right knowledge is a path that leads to right things at the right times that will end up at the right side of history. I'll say that again. Right knowledge is the path that will lead to right things at the right times that will end up on the right side of history. Now, did you know that right knowledge can cancel out beliefs? But can beliefs cancel out right knowledge? So in close, this is a short one today. In close, knowing and believing are two different things that are connected. So they're two different things that are connected. Just like up and down are connected. And just like east is connected to west. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, the typical person has no trouble believing without knowing. What people need to realize is simply that you do not need to believe to know. The new definition of stupid is knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing lies. I will close it here. Thank you for joining me for another Sunday Bars presentation. Looking forward to building with you next time. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love.